Hello, beloved leaders. I welcome you to this week's podcast on our channel, Biblical Leadership Institute. I want to speak to your manager. Does this phrase sound familiar? Well, if you Google the word Karen, uh, you'll be flooded with memes and videos about certain crazy people reacting awkwardly in public. Wikipedia defines a Karen as someone who has a sense of entitlement, a willingness and desire to complain, demands the world exist according to their standards with little regard for others, and even willing to risk or demean others to achieve their ends. I've been observing this phenomenon called Karenism and uh, would like to talk about what it is and uh, how people of faith can learn a very vital lesson from this trend that has suddenly caught social media by fire. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Before I proceed with my thoughts, uh, I would like you to watch this video snippet, an experiment to prove social normalization, since this is a key to our discussion today. We set up a hidden camera experiment to see if this woman would stand up at the sound of this tone, simply because everyone else is. You might be thinking you'd never go along with this, or would you? After just three beeps, and without knowing why she's doing it, this woman is now conforming perfectly to the group. But what happens if we take the group away? Elaine, please. Okay, now she's alone, the crowd is gone, and nobody is watching her, except our hidden cameras. What do you think she'll do? She's now conforming to the rules of the group without them even being there. Now, watch what happens when we introduce another outsider who doesn't know the rules. Have a seat and they'll be out in just a couple minutes. Great, thanks. thanks so much. Think she'll teach the new guy what to do? We kept the cameras rolling as more unsuspecting patients arrived. And slowly but surely, what began as a random rule for this woman has now become the social norm for everyone in this waiting room. If you're not familiar with the word social normalization, as you heard and witnessed in the video, it is uh, something that we do because everyone does it and has not bothered to know why everyone is doing it, but continue doing it. It is also referred to as mob mentality sometimes. Mariah Allen, author and uh, expert on issues concerning pornography, in her speech at TED uh, said this, what we see often is what we get used to. She was uh, referring to how pornography has successfully normalized sexual abuse by dehumanizing women. If you watch the full speech, uh, I'll provide the link in the description. She talks about uh, how certain men believe uh, it's okay to abuse women 
because the women in porn uh, show a positive response to aggression like slapping, strangling, and verbal abuse. I believe this is the crux of today's problem. You can sell an idea or even a perspective, however harmful it may be, by constantly seeing and talking about it on social media, TV, movies, magazines, etc. Elections are won, bad laws are passed, uh, good practices are shunned and rejected, all by the simple human psychological character. See often to make it the norm. But why am I talking about social normalization when the topic is about Karens? Well, we live in a world where sensitivities are high. Gender profiling, racial profiling, etc. are touchy topics and people get very offended when they witness these. We have produced uh, so many self-proclaimed social media judges who define what is right and who is right and have somehow inherited the right to criticize or appreciate whoever they want to. These are the ones who are especially precariously dicey on uh, issues like profiling and, and explode on the internet. But uh, for some strange reason, the entire world, including the aforementioned social media judges, uh, believe it's uh, perfectly okay to name profile someone as Karen and destroy the character, forgetting the fact that uh, Karen is a common name and demeaning the name can result in demeaning those that uh, named Karen also. There have been so many instances of people bearing that name, facing the brunt of uh, mockery, insult and, and hatred. How is it possible to accredit a name to a particular character? How is it even fair? I personally know so many Karens in my life, and uh, or I mean, and by Karen I mean their name, uh, and all of them are absolute sweethearts, and definitely do not fit the uh, definition of Karen according to the prevailing public perception. Uh, saying this, please do not think I'm in support of the selfish people who refuse to wear masks or or that speak with a sense of entitlement, racial slurs, etc. No. Uh, I'm only worried about the double standards that people have when it comes to what is uh, when it comes to choosing what is right and what is wrong. If you say a particular gender is synonymous uh, with a particular job, character, or weakness, people go frenzy and term you sexist or chauvinistic. If you assume a particular race to something, people rage at you, terming you are racist or xenophobic, etc. Uh, but hear this, it's perfectly okay to refer uh, to someone as Karen and derail their character and still worse, judge them and abuse them. So the secret that we all fail to realize is that uh, we are victims of social normalization. We are driven to imagine certain things are right, even though they may be ridiculous, and on the other hand, believe certain things are wrong even if they may have a history of being beneficial to mankind. The prophet Isaiah lamented about it back in those days. Isaiah 5.20 Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. If you had listened to my podcast on uh, leaving my Christian faith, where I spoke about how when it comes to smoking, alcoholism and drugs, only the bright side is talked about. And while when we talk about uh, God, religion and morals, there is a sense of hatred because only the dark side is constantly being highlighted. The end result is that we have successfully made drug, uh, drug abuse, alcoholism, pornography, everything a matter of recreation, while God and religion have become offensive and old school. See how we are being normalized into believing what is right and wrong? If you read my book, 10 Pragmatic Leadership Principles from the Bible, in chapter 6, titled Be Great, I had quoted how today anything can be sold if it's marketed the right way. It has become that it is not the quality of a product, but the amount of marketing 
that actually defines the success of a product. Why? Because whenever we access Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Netflix, etc., there are things that are purposefully talked about constantly so that over time it sinks in and becomes normal. If you don't believe me, have you noticed in the past few decades that every Hollywood movie has at least one portrayal of a broken family? Most of the time, the divorce is not even related uh, to the plot, but uh, is force-fitted in almost all the movies. I was uh, watching the recent uh, Disney animation movie, Luca, uh, along with my sons. There is uh, a character named Julia, and if you noticed, the parents of Julia are separated, and she lives with her father during summer. I was wondering, why is it even necessary to show them as separated, even though it wasn't in any way related to the story? Uh, If they were shown being together, the story would continue being as it is. Well, these are subtly added to movies, TV shows, and even ads to normalize society into thinking that divorce, brokenness, is a common occurrence, and children like Julia are perfectly okay with it. Julia is portrayed as an outgoing and charming girl uh, who does not seem to have any problems with the separation of their parents. Remember Mariah Arlen's quote on pornography and dehumanization of women? What we see often is what we get used to. So it is a call for all of us to watch out for what we learn from our bondage with social media. The sad part of this recent trend of Karenism is uh, that most of us are not even aware that we are being normalized secretly. We are being led to accept it just because it is accepted by everybody else. The Bible is very straightforward on this. Romans 12.2 Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Unfortunately, we are forced to act exactly against this verse by giving in to the influences of the world. So how do we handle the name profiling that is justified by the social media judges and literally everyone else? Well, for starters, I would propose that we no longer name it Karen because it qualifies as profiling and in a way justifies gender profiling and racial profiling too isn't it? It is blatant hypocrisy to uh, scoff at one and embrace the other. And don't you think uh, we need a single principle to base our morals rather than circumstantial opinions? Secondly, do not believe anything and everything that is being said and propagated on media. Validate and verify what you're being taught. Uh, We all have this urge to forward things we find interesting. Have we ever thought to verify the credibility of the things we hastily hit forward? It applies to this podcast also. You do not have to trust and believe whatever I profess. Rather, think through and share only if you find these thoughts are credible and beneficial. Colossians 2.8 See to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit. According to human tradition, according to elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. Colossians 3.2 Set your minds on things that are above, and not on things that are on earth. Which is an important reminder to have the thought of Christ, even though we coexist with social media and other influences of the world. Thirdly, it's uh, okay to be against the general perception. Whenever I counsel young people, I've noticed that uh, many openly accept that uh, they are not okay with some of the common perceptions in their uh, colleges or universities. But fearing the backlash and animosity, they outwardly pretend to accept it. Yes, in today's world, there are things we cannot disagree or else you'll be stared at as a bigot or a fanatic. You cannot or should not have another opinion about certain things other than what is commonly held as good and okay. Sadly, it is somewhat relevant to religion too. Sometimes believers are shunned and reprimanded for having a different perception as opposed to common belief. 
Proverbs 14.15, The simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. So it's absolutely okay to question anything and seek clarity or sometimes stand on what you believe is true without being scared of being judged. I would encourage you to use the comment section uh, to state some of the things you believe are being impressed on you, which you have a different opinion about. In summary, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 to 4. For the time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and turn aside to myths. So dear fellow believers, watch out for what you watch. Until I talk to you again next week, this is John signing off. God bless you.